Coming up, it's all hands on deck down at the Gator Lagoon. Whoops. Hold it. Right, mate. My boy Bill talks to the dingoes. Oh. And the public gets what the public wants. I'm going underground. Now we're deep inside the cave. One of the keepers has seen some unusual activity down at the Alligator Lagoon. I'd better check it out. Alligators are nest builders, and my guess is that this mum is rebuilding her nest after laying her eggs through the night. The thing is, she's three weeks early. We weren't expecting this at all. It's caught us a little off guard, if I'm honest. She's lucky she was caught in the act. We are forecast a 40 degree day today, and that's not good for the eggs. Temperatures here are way above what gators would experience at laying time in their native environment. I'm going to have to take action. There's no other way around it. We've got to raid that nest. 40 degrees, a protective mother, and to top it all off, we've got a lagoon full of hungry alligators. Righto, we've got Obes, Mick, Kyle. This is no easy job. I've called in the troops. We're going to need all hands on deck if this is to go smoothly before the heat wave strikes. So, all good? All good. Righto, let's go. We've got two issues here. We've got mum and X, and we've got a hot day. That means the other 40 alligators, they want food and they want it bad. They're aggressive. All right, beauty. Everyone in. Gators are strong, and she's a big gator. We've got to move fast. It's cramped, it's quite tight. That's why she's put the nest there. She can defend it, it makes our life hard. Whoa. I need to get a rope around her jaws and keep them sharp. She's protective of that nest, and so she should be. But if we don't intervene, the eggs will perish. Go on, grab OK, Mike, grab with Obes. Lift her up a bit. We want her away from the water. Kyle, jump on too, mate. OK, ready, boys? One, two, three. That's it. Go. Feet up. Make it quick. Good. Ready? No worries. Go. OK, let's get into that nest. When you capture them like this, if they struggle and tense up for too long, that can cause a lactic acid buildup, and that can be fatal. Look at that. Oh, right, mate? She's a big female, very strong. And that's what she's trying to defend. Unfortunately, if we leave them in here, they're not going to make it past today. With temperatures on the rise, everyone's feeling the heat. Yeah. This operation is intense. We've got a defensive female. We've got reptiles on a 40-degree day. That means they are hot-blooded. Their batteries are charged, and they're going to be charging. OK, well, that's the last egg. Let's get off her hay and let her go. I think it was hard catching Mum. Imagine letting her go. She's got them back legs kicked in. Right. Kyle gone. Mickey, one, two, three, go. Righto, boys. Come on down. The thing is, if one's laid, there's a pretty good chance one of the other girls has as well. Bit abnormal to be doing it during the day. And she hasn't laid, hey, because she's not in attack mode. She's nesting. Still getting it ready, yeah. The next nest, I've decided not to do. The female is showing some signs that she's still in nesting mode and hasn't laid her eggs. Well, maybe tomorrow, eh? but we'll leave her yeah. alone today. Right. If I was to catch her and she hasn't laid the eggs, I could crush them inside her. That can kill her. As I feared, we've got another one, and the position's worse than the last. We've got a defensive, aggressive mum, and we've got 40 alligators that have a very easy opportunity with this one to come straight out of the water right where we're working. For everyone that's not a mum, they just think it's feed time. Back up a little, Dino. Watch the gators behind you, mate. OK. We right? Obes, you on the water? Ralphie, on that rope, please. Keep pulling that rope forward tight. Mike, stay on her. Just make sure, you know, she'll do a good run, mate. Keep a bit of pressure on that, Jimbo. Obes, you got her? All right, I'm going to grab some eggs, boys. I've got two guys on the gator. I'm just about to go and check the eggs, and then it happens. Just because she's got three back up, feet. Back up, back up, back up. Dino? Everyone must know their roles right now, because there's gators everywhere. Back up, back up, back up. Kyle and Mick, Obes, down the water. Back up, crew. The 
centre of Tasmania is full of temperate rainforest, just like this, cool forest with running streams. Millions of years ago, a supercontinent called Gondwana looked just like this, but full of prehistoric animals. Tasmania was closer to the equator and covered by a warm and mostly shallow sea. Over time, an almost infinite amount of microscopic marine organisms died and compressed together, formed a layer of limestone across the island. All the mountains on top, they came much later. But I'm here to explore another world, a world of darkness where life has adapted to survive without the replenishing effects of sunlight. These limestone caves are a historical timepiece that have provided insight into the history of the Earth. As for wildlife down here, there isn't much, but what there is, is fascinating. This is a cave cricket. Now, this species is only found throughout Tasmanian caves, and they're perfectly adapted to live in the caves. They've got super long legs, and their antennae stretch so much longer than their body. Now, that's because their primary sense is touch. No point having good eyesight in a dark cave. They live a precarious life just on the inside of the cave entrance. But the food they need, vegetation, is found outside the cave. So as night falls, they need to do the trip daily to find their food. But that's not necessarily an easy trip. And this is what he's got to be wary of. This is a Tasmanian cave spider. And they spend their whole lives inside the caves. Now each night as the cricket passes through, he's got to get past this spider's web. Now, they're quite unique and perfectly adapted to live inside the caves. Their webs are made on a horizontal plane against a flat surface. There's nothing flying in here, so a traditional spider web that may be vertical and span a distance has no use. They need to catch the cricket as it walks by. Now, the spider has another trick. Instead of just having one web, it has two. And if the cricket was to fall through the first, it's captured by the second. This spider can live for over 10 years and grow up to 18 centimetres. This one's nearing full size. And they're called a book lung. Now, what that means is that they have a very primitive set of lungs and they're actually on the outside of the body, nothing like ours. Now, the way the lung works is like a book, open and close, open and close. And that draws in humid air to keep the lungs moist, drawing the oxygen to circulate around the body. The closest living relative of the Tasmanian cave spider is another cave-dwelling spider found in Chile, across the Pacific Ocean, on the other side of the world. How did that come to be? Well, these spiders were alive in the time of Gondwana, before the continents split. Just in the still water here inside the cave is a mountain shrimp. And it's safe to say that this shrimp has never seen the light of day. They're filter feeders, and they filter microscopic organisms into their little mouths. They spend their entire life inside the cave. They're transparent in tiny little eyes. For them too, everything is about touch. That's their main sense. So their little legs, and there's lots of them, are covered in hairs, and they feel their way around. They're about the only living thing, apart from microorganisms, that you'll find in the water inside the cave. Now we're deep inside the cave. No light penetrates through to here. And if we turn the lights off, I can't see my hand in front of my face. It is so dark. But as my eyes begin to adjust, I can tell I'm not alone. There are a million lights, little dots on the ceiling. They're glowworms. They're minuscule. Now, this is a time lapse shot over three weeks. You wouldn't be able to see them move like this, but isn't it just amazing these creatures exist so far underground? Now, if the question of what's a stalactite and what's a stalagmite baffles you, stay tuned. I will settle all arguments. We like to start them young at the Australian Reptile Park, 
So I brought my son Bill along to give him a taste of what being a zookeeper is all about. What is it? Who is it? Is it an alligator? That's right, mate. It is an alligator. Say good morning, big guy. He's big. He's big, yeah. We're accustomed to them, of course, but kangaroos are a real novelty to most people, and the chance to see them and feed them up close is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Oh, he's got it. The roos can look after themselves. If we don't crack on, though, we'll never get our jobs done for the day. Come on, let's go and see Duma. What's Duma? Down this way. There'll this way. always be time to say hello to two of my favourites at the park. There he is. Dumaji, Dumaji the dingo. Good morning, Dum. Hello, Oak. Who's that one? Hello, Dum. Dingoes get a bad rap in the wild, but to me, they're an important part of the landscape that helps to manage the land, especially against the plague of feral pests. Can you howl like a dingo? Can you do a soft one to Duma? Oh. And now a loud one to Oka. Oh. She's looking. <gasps> Did you hear him? He's talking to you. Say, so see you, dogs. They might look like pet dogs, but dingoes are wild animals. We just have to respect their space, and if humans can get our part of the deal right, we could all live happily together. Can I go in there one time with you? Yeah, when you're a little bit bigger, you can come in there Why? with me. Well, because they're big dingoes. For now, it'll be some time off before Bill can accompany me in with Duma and Oka. Give them a wave, please, and say, see you guys. See you guys, go. Doing the rounds of morning checks and hellos is important. All the animals in the park need to be seen, and that includes the biggest. Huh? Big Elvis is just up here. Whoa. Oh. Come here, mate, I'll put you up top. Uh, just recently, Elvis has certainly been living up to his title as Australia's crankiest croc. A while back, he wasn't too pleased with one of the rangers doing a spot of lawn mowing in his yard. So in good old cranky croc style, he grabbed hold of the mower and dragged it into his pond. Luckily, mowers aren't the best tasting morsels out there, and we were able to distract him with some meat. Let's go, mate. Hey, Elvis! Well, I guess we'll eventually get round to some work. But Bill's got a few old mates he wants to see in the lost world of reptiles. OK. Here you go. Look at him. That's a parenti. A parenti. Look at the size of him. Look at the size of him. What can you see in here? What is it? That's an alligator snapping turtle. Leonardo was rescued from the drains in Sydney before coming to us. You wouldn't want to get in the way of those jaws. They're some of the strongest on Earth and will easily have your fingers if you go too close. Come on, go and have a look at Betty. And of course, a visit to the lost world of reptiles wouldn't be complete without saying hello to Atomic Betty. Look, she's all curled up, mate. Do you think she's sleeping? Betty is a reticulated python, and at over six metres long, she's a potential man-eater. Got to go now and give the wombat a bottle because she's thirsty. Come on, call her, mate. Say, come on. Here she comes. Come on. This is Ruby. She's a 12-month-old baby wombat. Well, a big baby. She only gets two bottles a day now. We're going to do that. Come on, Rube. This way. Come on. She's going to sit there like this. Put the bottle in her mouth. There you go. Come on, Rube. Ah, oh, milk just went everywhere. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a go for a sec. Oh, you know what? I think it's cold. We need to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, you look after her for a sec, mate. I'm going to get some warm water. Make sure she doesn't come out, please. See that worm? See that worm? Yeah. Whoa! Oh, well, looks like Bill needs a little more training in wombat wrangling. With the milk warm, it's time for a second go. Give her a cuddle. And here we go. There's a bottle. Now you've got to hold it up in the air. Can you put your hand on? That's a boy. Ruby's got a pretty sad story. 
and that her mother was hit by a car in the wild and she was orphaned. But luckily, she was found by a really nice family and they actually checked the pouch and found Ruby alive inside. So they brought her here to the reptile park when she was tiny, just fit in your hands. And look how well she's doing now. Now, her future's not sad. She'll be a little ambassador for a species and maybe help many animals like her be saved. I think she doesn't want that little bit. No, she's finished now. You did a good job, but look. Oh, that's all right. Do you want it? No. Come on, let's take it for a walk. <laughs> you can catch up with Bill and Ruby next time. Hit him, Jimbo, and back up, back up, back up, back up. Dino, back up, back up, back up. Kyle and Mick, over down the water. We're down back at the through. Alligator Lagoon. I got a call earlier to, to say there's some unusual mine, activity. Mate. Just make sure you got an exit, Mike. It certainly proved to be the case as we've got eggs being laid weeks earlier than expected. Okay, watch big boy there, hey. Just watch, she won't turn again. She'll turn again. We've got a heat wave pounding down on us. And whilst the boys are restraining this girl, I've got the task of rescuing her eggs from a rapidly overheating nest. It's warm. And the whole reason for building a nest is because they need a constant temperature of between 31 and 32 degrees for the eggs to hatch. Any colder or hotter, they die. Problem here is that our sun's just too hot and they overheat. That's warm. OK, I'm going to get them out now, nice and quick. Jeez, I don't like them there. They're quick, them little ones, oh. They catch you off guard. Whoop, stop her, Abe. She's a little one. I don't like the little ones. They think it's feed time and they're coming up. Problem is, we're left with two blokes on one gator, defenceless. If gators get through us, they're gonna grab them. That's the last egg. Righto, that's it, guys. Hey, finish now. We gotta keep moving. We do not wanna keep that female down, and we've got hungry gators everywhere. Team and step back. One, two, three, go. Righto, mate, I'm getting out of here. Good release. That was dangerous, exciting, and the eggs are safe. Well, it's time to set the eggs up. Now I need some water. I don't want the eggs sitting in water. I just need it really humid in there. So this material will keep the eggs up. I'm going to fill the bottom up with water. OK, that's pretty good. And now careful does it with our precious cargo. People think it's cruel to remove the eggs, but we must. Our temperature here is just not suitable. They will not survive. You know what? Even if they did, Alligators are cannibals. A high-density population like that, they'd all be eaten. This way, we ensure they do survive. Now to a temperature-controlled room. That's really important. All right, well, that's it. But set your clock, because in 60 days' time, we're going to have some baby gators. It's been nine weeks since our little gator eggs were laid. Any day now, they're due to hatch. It could be today. Here we go. Look at that. Listen to that. That's not something you want to hear in the wild. That means mum's coming. I'm your mum for today. Come on, I'll help you out. You've all hatched well. And those little cries for help, they call out to mum. And when mum hears that, she would go up to the nest, dig it up, she picks up the babies so gently in her mouth and she carries them down to the water. And that's what I'm replicating here. A quick rinse and now they're ready for the next stage of their life. Hello, little fella. You're tiny and you're white. Look how small he is. You can be Harry, Harry the hatchling. You're gonna need a bit of extra care, hey, mate. How white he is. And my guess would be, if he was in the wild, he'd be the first one to get eaten. He's a very vulnerable little fella. But luckily, we can look after him. Hey, mate, it's your lucky day. In you go. Look at you guys, ready to go. Here's your new home. You ready to go in? The baby gators will be in, in this little enclosure for about a year. And after a year, they'll maybe be 40 centimetres long, at which point they need to be moved up a grade in cage. And it's a very slow process because they're not at maturity until about maybe 10 to 20 years old. Here we go. This is what it's all about. 
Remember, if they were left in the nest, they'd have all died. Now look at them. Listen to the calls. Even in here, they're still calling for mum. They know now this is their home, this is where they're going to live, and they're just checking that I'm still here. But there's one little guy who's reluctant to go. Now, you guys, don't pick on Harry, please. Hey, what, you want to stay with me? You want to stay with me, right? Don't you stay... There you go. See you, guys. I'll bring you some food a bit later. I'm at the Maracoopa Caves in Tasmania. Now, if you've ever debated the age-old question of what's a stalactite or stalactite, then fear not. Tim's here to settle the argument. As rain falls above ground, it absorbs carbon dioxide. This creates carbonic acid, like your soft drink. As that seeps down through the porous earth, it creates a chemical reaction with the limestone and dissolves it. As the water continues down, it now carries with it minerals. One of the main minerals is calcite. As it enters the cave, the liquid deposits the calcite, which begins forming what's known as straws. And every now and then, a straw gets blocked. And over thousands of years, the walls of the straws thicken until eventually you end up with monsters like this, stalactites. As the drips continue to fall, they hit the ground, depositing more calcite. This builds up, creating stalagmites. Every now and then, they meet in the middle and form a column. Now, there's three examples here. One that almost has, one that recently has, or still a few thousand years ago, and one that's been together for a long time. That's me done down here. It's chilly. All that's left now is to find my way out. Now, the ranger said lights out and doors shut in 20 minutes. How long have I been down here? Huh? Ranger? Ranger! Coming up, it's all hands on deck down at the Gator Lagoon. Whoops. Hold it. Right, mate. My boy Bill talks to the dingoes. Oh! And the public gets what the public wants. I'm going underground. Now we're deep inside the cave. Is it an That's right, mate. What are you seeing here? What is it? Oh, you know what? I think it's cold. We need to warm it up a little bit. Yeah, you look after her for a sec, mate. I'm gonna get some warm water. Make sure she doesn't come out, please. See that room? See that room? Yeah. Whoa! I think he doesn't want that little bit. No, she's finished now. You did a good job, but look. Oh, that's all right. Do you want it? No, come on, let's take her for a walk. That's me done down here. It's chilly. All that's left now is to find my way out. Now, the ranger said lights out and doors shut in 20 minutes. How long have I been down here? Huh? Ranger? 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 